This is Ralph VK3 Lima Lima showing you the construction of the EMDRC hands-free kit. The board you'll see here already has the resistors soldered on and uh, we'll take you through the next steps uh, which is uh, going to be putting the capacitors on the board. There's no particular order that the components need to be mounted um, but uh, uh, it's usually easier to start with some of the smaller components first. The only thing I would say is just be aware that on some of the uh, revisions of the boards the uh, resistor R4 is shown as 33K which is incorrect, it is a 3.3K. All the capacitors go on, the only thing uh, you need to be careful there is the uh, tantalum capacitors, they need to be polarity, uh, polarity conscious they all go around the same way. Here we're putting in the uh, trim pots, there are three trim pots and uh, those are inserted with the screw terminal as per the screen overlay. Make sure that the uh, screw terminal is in the right spot um, and uh, all three trim pots uh, which have different values by the way so make sure you get them in the right spots um, should be uh, soldered uh, with the screw terminal pointing in the right direction. Next uh, IC sockets are put in, there are three IC sockets, the 8 pin socket which you see here which is inserted for the op amp and uh, that just goes in. All of the ICs of course are uh, directionally sensitive, they can only go in or should only be inserted one way, that is the right way. And um, uh, the uh, other IC is the uh, 18 pin IC for the PIC processor which uh, we're going to put in right now. Uh, then there is a 16 pin header for the uh, jumper which is going in right now. I guess you don't have to use the uh, header jumper if you don't really want to but I would certainly advise it. It makes it much easier later if you want to change uh, radio transceivers. The jumper header is used to uh, strap the uh, various pins that the hands-free device needs to your particular radio configuration and it makes it very simple to, uh, to uh, change later on if you ever need to. Next we're putting in the 5 volt regulator. Uh, you just simply bend the centre pin which is the ground pin. Now these are polarity sensitive of course. Uh, the flat side of the uh, regulator goes in as per the uh, overlay. And we'll solder that up on the bottom side here. Next we're going to put in the uh, open collector output transistor. This is a BC548 NPN transistor. Again we bend the centre pin which is the base and uh, the flat side of the transistor is orientated as per the screen uh, overlay on the board. All looking good. Next we're going to put in a protection diode just in case the transceiver uses a uh, a uh, relay, this will protect the transistor from damage from the back EMF and a voltage protection diode, a Schottky diode is inserted here. There are only two diodes in the entire um, device, or plus an LED. Okay there are two two pin headers uh, we're putting them in here, one's used for the PTT button and the other is used for the external power. I guess if you're not going to use external power you won't need to put that in but we're putting it here in any case. It's a 3.5mm socket, stereo socket for the uh, microphone which is inserted. Make sure it's pushed right down so it seats properly. And we're now putting in the two RJ45 8 pin connectors, one used go to the transceiver, the other used for a loop through to a, to a microphone. Now putting in the RF choke. Uh, the RF chokes used, uh, it works perfectly at VHF. You may need a larger value uh, if you get any interference at, uh, at HF, but uh, I've used it on 40 and uh, uh, 80 metres quite successfully. The two ICs are going in now the pick chip, make sure you put them around the right way as per the overlay on the board and the TLO72 dual op amp. 
We're putting the LED in now. I'm not putting it all the way down because I'll position it into the case later and uh, and uh, orientate it correctly. So I'm leaving fairly long leads on the LED as you can see there. Now we're going to set up the header. I remove the cap from it which is not used and then referring to the document which is supplied with the kit for various transceivers I'm jumpering the pins. In this case I'm using the ICOM uh, wiring and I'm jumpering the pins. I just used small pieces of hookup wire but you could even use some of the legs that are left off uh, some of the ICs that you've cut out. And there it is, the, uh, the uh, header is now inserted. Okay, next thing is uh, hooking it up to your transceiver and preparing for uh, uh, operation. The option one and option two jumpers are not used. Uh, they are referred to in the documentation. Here's the microphone. I'm going to remove the clip from that because I'm not using it. Three and a half mil plugs in and there is a little foam uh, pop filter for that as well. Next thing I'm going to do is wire up uh, the PTT switch using two sh uh, short lengths of, uh, of cable, of hookup wire. I'm going to wire that onto the uh, switch and at the other end I'm going to connect up a, uh, a two pin header plug as well. This is not really polar polarity important so it can go around either way. Here's the completed switch wired up to the two pin header and that goes onto the PTT pins right there. Okay, so there's the switch and the board ready to be mounted in the case, which we'll do a little bit later. Referring to the instructions, I'm going to uh, prepare the uh, settings of the trim pots here as per the instructions by rotating anti-clockwise at least 25 turns and then setting them back. This is all fully documented in the instructions. Uh, setting it this way means that it'll be just about right when you uh, plug it in and you'll be fairly close. For today's test I'm going to uh, just do it on the bench here but normally you would do the final testing of course uh, once it's in the case and in the vehicle. Incidentally if you're using a Yesu transceiver you can use an RJ11 plug. The RJ11 is only six pins but it fits right into the middle of the uh, uh, RJ45 eight pin connector so there's a little tip for you. I'm going to remove the header for a moment and keep that out of circuit and I'm going to use today um, my ICOM transceiver so I'm using just a Cat5 uh, computer cable 8 pin to 8 pin so I'm going to hook that up one end here into the uh, into the hands free adapter the other end I'll plug into the transceiver now with the header unplugged I'm going to look for my 8 volts between the two pins and I'm going to check this first because you don't want to fry the uh, internal 8 volt regulator through a short I'm just going to check that the pins are there and yep yeah, there it is 7.8 volts which is pretty close to what is expected okay I'm going to hook up the microphone put the PTT on jumpers back in circuit there it goes and I hit the button and the LED flashes indicating that it is in fact transmitting and uh, that's it that's the construction of the hands-free kit